and the studio is all reorganized as you saw in that time lapse and we will get to that later but today we are reviewing the DJI Action 2. This is DJI's relatively new action camera now and I've been using it for a while I purchased it earlier this year and it has become my dedicated action and vlogging camera. So today I'm going to talk you through many features including the style, the functionality, how this camera fits into my everyday shooting and a lot more. So if you're interested then keep watching, like and subscribe if you like what you see and without further ado, let's review this camera. The DJI Action 2 comes in a box packaged like this and if you want to see everything that comes in the box go watch my unboxing which will be up in the corner now. In that video I simply unboxed the camera when it was new but now we're going to talk about the actual camera itself. Now this camera is tiny, it's, it's literally tiny. Okay here I have my phone, this is a Samsung Galaxy A12, it is a relatively large phone but you can see the incredible size difference there, it's a tiny camera and believe it or not that is all you need to take video or photos using this camera. You don't need the bottom component. However, the bottom component is advised if you want to use this camera to its full capability. When put together, they simply magnet together and clip and that attachment is very strong. I have never had these two cameras detached. So if when you're looking to buy this camera, you're worried that they're going to detach or fall apart, they won't. I've put this camera through all sorts of hell and it has never come apart. So the way it clips together is very stable. Now this camera comes in a case, as you may be able to see there is a plastic case around it. This is a magnetic case and it helps with the problem of overheating with this camera. Now when designed this camera did have a flaw of overheating and DJI recognizing the problem sent out free magnetic cases which mean that the heat can dissipate better and the camera doesn't stop recording because it gets too hot. And next we're going to talk about the style and design of this camera and to do that I'm going to take the case off. The case is very practical when it comes to shooting but I prefer the look of the camera without the case. Now to take it out of the case you can simply pop it out. Here is the camera without the case and similarly for the bottom it's a bit more fiddly but can just pop it out like so. I have to unclip it. That's producing a problem. Oh dear. There we go. Got it out. Chaos. So now we have the two components without any of the casing. They clip together even better now there's no case in the way and it has a very nice style. Personally one of the main reasons I bought this camera was one, well obviously because of its abilities, but two, it has a very sleek style. This style just looks professional, it's very neat and tidy. There's not arms extruding everywhere with like different functions, it's very neat in a little box and the camera itself is tiny. The camera is very sturdy. I've dropped this camera, I've put it in water, I've done underwater photography with it and videography. I've dropped it, I've kicked it, I've literally this camera's been through quite a lot and it is still looking brand new partially because of the casing. There is an advantage of the casing, it does protect the camera but the camera itself is very sturdy. Now on this camera I also have two tempered glass protectors on the lens and then one on the screens and this does keep the camera from scratching because when you're taking a camera out into the wild and you're doing all of this stuff, it can get scratched, whether that's in your pockets or out by tree branches and everything. And so having that temper glass gives an extra layer of protection. And should I get a really bad scratch, I can remove the glass and put new ones on and the camera will be brand new. So I would advise doing that if you want to learn more, just comment down below and I will help you out. But the camera itself without that is still very very sturdy. The top module itself doesn't have any inputs except for a button on the top. You can click this button to start and stop recording and it's a touch screen on the back so you can access all the settings even though there isn't a large array of buttons. You can see the electricity connectors on the bottom however this is very unobtrusive and neat. The camera also has little holes so you can attach a wrist strap to the camera if you don't want to lose it. The bottom is more complex. It has the touch screen at the front and then it has the connectors at the top so it can connect to the top module. 
There is a button on the side so you can still control recording and the like. And then there's also an SD card on the back here and a USB-C port for charging. And so while we're talking about the design, it's one thing I'm not so keen on, and that's the fact you have to charge this camera through the bottom module. The top module, the one with the camera on it, cannot be recharged on its own. It must be connected to the bottom module, which can be plugged in. This means that, as I did recently, I took the, my camera out and I had just the top module on top. This meant that I could have a very compact setup. However, I forgot that I can't charge this camera alone, which meant once the battery ran out, I couldn't do any more POV with the camera. So if you need this camera to be recharged and last you a long time, you do need the bottom module with you so you can charge it. As you can now see, I've turned the camera on. The touchscreen at the front is recording my setup here, and then you should be able to see me. The touchscreen is very responsive to the finger, and it does everything you need it to do. It's like a little phone screen, sometimes there's a bit of a delay, and sometimes when you swipe across to see the files you've recorded, it will do that, where it gives you the camera settings. So it does get a little bit confused very occasionally, however this has ne never posed a problem for me, because you can easily get round it, you've just got to be a little, little bit patient. The back, similarly, I'll have to unlock it because it has a locking mechanism so you don't accidentally change the settings. Again, very responsive to the finger. This means that this camera is very modern and easy to use. You don't have to worry about buttons. It's very self-explanatory, similar to any phone. And if using a touchscreen or navigating buttons is too difficult for you, this camera has an incredible mode where you can voice control the camera. You can simply say, start recording and the camera will start recording you. This means that you can go hands-free with the camera and, as you can see, it is now recording. And we've talked a lot about the style and design of this camera, so now we're going to move on to the functions of this camera. This camera can record 4K at 120 frames per second, which is its biggest selling point. It can do slow motion in 4K, which I've used. It's very, very, very impressive. The camera can also do 240 frames per second in 1080p, meaning you can do incredible slow motion with still having the high quality. Now, personally, I still film a lot in 1080p. I believe that quality is very good and adequate. And if you want a super slow motion, that will work perfectly for you. And a very classic action camera feature is the stabilization. And I can tell you this camera has incredible stabilization. It does exactly what it promises. It has a rock steady mode, a steady mode, a horizon balancing mode. It has all the modes that you could ever want and they work very well. I go out and do my wildlife photography vlogs on very uneven terrain. I go out walking, sometimes I'm running. So, little jog. People think I'm crazy, but it's all for the photos. And this camera produces smooth cinematic-like footage, even though my arm is joggling all around, you know, it, it shouldn't be producing smooth footage. In fact, if you watch my first ever photography vlogs, you'll see I'm using my phone and there's no stabilization. That kind of stabilization versus this stabilization is insane. And it definitely makes the viewing of a video much more enjoyable because you're not joggling all over the place. It's very smooth. It is much more cinematic. The camera has all the usual settings. It does 16 by nine. It also does four by three. So you can frame it whether you're filming for YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, any other form of social media. This camera can film perfectly fine for those formats and transferring the files from the camera to whatever device you want is very easy. You can plug it in using a USB to USB-C into a laptop, say, or you can hook it up to your phone using the DJI Mimo app. Now this app is very usable. Sometimes the connection can be a little bit dodgy, but I'm not sure if that's just my old phone. So the connection works perfectly fine once it's connected and you can transfer files, you can look at files, you can also remote record. You can fully control the camera from your smartphone. I've used this when I've gone to film events and I've set the camera up and I've walked away to take photos, but then I can check up on the camera's recording and control it from my smartphone across the venue. It's really, really useful. And aside from doing the typical action camera stuff, which you can see on the specifications of this camera, it can also take photos, do quick clips, slow motion and time lapses, hence the time lapse that I did at the beginning of this video. 
I personally love the time-lapse feature. I use it all the time when it comes to events, setting things up, moving things around, which take too long to film and you don't want to film it on a regular setting or you'll have a huge file. Using the time-lapse on this camera is very fun. So that was kind of what the time-lapse at the beginning was. It demonstrates this camera doing a time-lapse. The slow motion is also very effective. I've accidentally used that before when I didn't intend to, which was just my bad. But here is, you know, a little example of the slow motion. Otherwise, you can just film in a high frame rate and slow it down in editing. The camera can take photos, and this is something I only discovered recently. You can control all the settings in this camera. Now, when it comes to using a DSLR, like this enormous one you can see behind me, you can control all the settings because it's a huge camera, it's got all the buttons. Well, I thought this camera would be similar to any phone camera. It would be automatic, it would just do everything for you and take the photo, which isn't ideal because quite often as a photographer you don't want to do the typical photo. You want to do your own customised artistic photo. Until I discovered the pro mode on this camera. You can control the ISO, the shutter speed and the aperture. Like, this camera is a mini DSLR but it's super wide. It doesn't have the zoom, but the rest of the features are incredible. This camera has blown me away and I can't wait to take it out and actually use some of these features. I haven't got the opportunity yet. I plan on doing some night photography, maybe some stars because you can put the shutter speed and everything really low to allow in lots of light. I can't wait to test things like that out. And if you want to watch me test that out, then subscribe, visit my Instagram because you'll see updates there and you guys can come along on my journeys with all of my photography. And finally, this camera is advertised as a vlogger's camera. Now, action cameras typically on motorcycle helmets, you know, on those big buggies jumping up and down through the mud. That's the kind of typical place you see an action camera. However, as a vlogger, an action camera is a very handy piece of kit and this is marketed perfectly for a vlogger. Now, if you're new here on my channel, I do lots of wildlife photography vlogs, meaning I go out into nature for long periods of time with a lot of equipment taking photos of wildlife. Now, this is demanding on me and any piece of kit that I bring along with me. And before, I used to use the setup I'm using now, the Canon 250D with a wide lens, such as the 24mm. This meant a few things. One, very heavy. It means you're carrying a lot of equipment for a lot of distance, and that is never ideal. But also, it's displaying a lot of equipment to people, and I don't want the attention of people who look at the equipment, you know. It's all about just being sensible with your equipment. This little camera, however, can sit in your pocket and doesn't take up any room. It's very good at what it needs to do and produces great results. Now, if you've been watching my channel for a long time, you'll have seen the progression that I've made through vlogging setups. I've used a phone, which the quality was questionable. I've used the DSLR, which had great quality, and I've used this camera, which personally has produced the best vlogs in my opinion. The quality isn't as good as a DSLR, you don't get the blurry background, you don't get that depth of field. However, you get a wide camera without having to reach your arm miles and miles into the distance, and you get the wide angle, meaning you get absorbed in the environment as well as me. Because with the DSLR, it was very much my face in the camera, it was me talking to you, but you couldn't see that much of the background. With this camera, you can get immersed in the entire environment, which I think, as a vlogger, is a great thing, because ultimately, you guys, you are there to watch me, but you're also there to see what I'm doing, to see the place that I'm in, and to get the context. It helps you guys connect with what I'm doing. Now, I recognise I'm saying a lot about this camera, I have a lot to say about this camera, and I might have to make a part two because I don't think we're going to cover it all today. However, if you have any questions, put them down in the comments below, or message me at TAW Photography UK on Instagram, go follow me, and I'd love to see you there. Now, you can use this camera for so many things. It's adjustable to any environment or situation. And one of the main ways it does that is through the variability of how you can connect it to things. Now, this is probably my favorite feature and one of the largest selling points of the camera. You can put this round your neck, like so. Just tighten it up. And there's this little front magnet bit. Now, I'm gonna tuck this plate behind my shirt so it disappears. And then this little front bit clips on the front through my shirt. I'm not sure if you can see that. And then, finally, you get the camera itself. It connects onto the front of the shirt, meaning I now have a body camera, but it's very discreet. It doesn't have a huge rig. It's not difficult to attach. You can simply clip it on and off. If you want to make it even smaller, you can just use the camera module, attach that, and you literally have a tiny body cam. This is great when it comes to filming videos because you can have a wide range of different perspectives. You can have a POV 
perspective like I'm showing you now, you can probably see my arms waving around and the camera setup I've got in front of me. Similarly, you can attach the camera on top of another camera and get the top of a camera view. Or you can attach it to your head, you've got another POV view, or you can just hold it out in front of you, you know, that's the boring kind of normal vlogging way. And just like the magnetic functioning between the two modules, you can attach it to components like this. This is the on the end of a selfie stick here, and you can simply clip the camera onto the end, and you now have a very usable camera. This is what I use if I just want to stand the DJI Action up, because it's a very small camera, this is all you need, and you can stand it up like so. Now you can see I have a new perspective, I'm just standing it up on a little selfie stick, but it acts just like a tripod, and because the camera is so compact, you get a very steady bit of footage. And so now we're going to talk about the technicalities, the little bits and bobs of the camera, such as battery and the SD card. Now the battery of this camera we have touched on, you have to charge it through the bottom module. And with the camera that I bought, I have the touch screen on the bottom. This acts as a battery and together, this camera can last for 180 minutes. That gives you plenty of time to vlog. I've never had an issue when it comes to vlogging. However, when you want to do POV for a long period of time, say you're doing street photography, then you probably want a little bit longer than 180 minutes. It's three hours if my maths is correct, and that means that if you're out, you only have that amount of time to shoot, and that will be on a minimum setting. If you're using this camera on a higher quality setting, that time will get less and less. There are settings, however, you can do to preserve the battery on this camera. I have a setting where once we start recording on this camera, you'll see that the screens turn off after three seconds, meaning that now the camera has no screens on. However, it is still recording, and this means that the camera's battery is saved. It's very handy when it comes to saving battery because the battery will run out. Now, you can buy an extra battery for the bottom of this camera if you need more battery for your travels or whatever. I haven't done that again, but it is something I may do in the future. And with the SD card, it sits in the back. The SD card can also only be accessed through the bottom module, meaning if you're purely using the top module, you are using built-in memory. However, when they're attached, the SD card reads relatively well, except it can stop sometimes. This may not be due to the camera, it may be due to my SD card. So take this with a pinch of salt. Here you can see the SD card that I'm using, hopefully, if the camera will focus on it, it's so tiny. And it is like an ultra-fast 128GB SD card, so it should work relatively well. However, like all things, you know, it does sometimes stop recording in 4K. However, most of the time, on the lower resolution settings, the card works perfectly fine. It does give a little orange warning, as you can see. It says SD card speed slow, shooting may stop. And as I say, on the high resolutions, the shooting can sometimes stop, which is frustrating. So I think we're now getting into the little niggles of this camera. The negatives, because we've been talking a lot about positives. I have given you a few, but now let's delve into the problems, the things which I'm not so keen about with the camera. Now. This camera, as I mentioned, can stop recording on a high resolution. It also gets very hot. Now, it's very, very slightly warm, but it's been off most of the time. That's probably just my hands. However, when you're shooting with this camera for a long time, it does heat up, hence the magnetic case. While recording at high resolutions, the camera can also have audio issues. Now, this is only if you're in a crazy environment. If you're shooting in a studio like I am now indoors, you'll be perfectly fine. However, the other day, I took this camera out on a windy day. It was actually, if you want to know which video it was specifically, I'll put it in the corner. It was a video where I had to take one photo of a robin. Now, for that video, I was using this camera, and I was out vlogging. It was very windy, there was lots of wind, and I was slightly worried about the wind noise and this camera anyway. However, it was perfectly fine when recording in 2.7K. Um, we, we got good footage and everything, except when I turned it up to 4K, we had an issue. When recording at 4K, sometimes with all that wind, the audio would just cut out altogether. Now, I'm not sure why it did this. I'm not sure if this is something which is generic to all cameras or just mine. I'm not sure if it's one of my settings. I'm not an expert, but when it comes to just using this camera, it did cut out, meaning that audio was unusable, those clips were unusable, and I had to re-record them in a lower resolution. And the other issue with audio is that when handling this camera, it can produce a lot of noise or disrupt the audio. Now, when I shoot with this camera, I'm never actually holding the camera because there's a way to get around this problem. I have this selfie stick, which I'm always using. If I'm not using the selfie stick, I'll have another little attachment under the camera. 
The reason I don't hold the camera is because the microphones are all around the edge of the camera. And it's far too easy to accidentally rub your fingers over these microphones while holding the camera, which can dull the audio, make it sound disgusting, it's not very nice. But again, the way to get around that is using a selfie stick. It's not ideal, but it does solve the problem. While we're talking about audio, I am just going to say that it does have incredible audio. Now I'm using a Boya MM1 microphone, a proper dead cat as you've seen, and it produces a nice audio. However, I would argue that the microphones on this camera produce a better sound. I love using this camera and I love the noise it makes. When I'm using it, I don't feel like I need an extra microphone because the sound quality is incredible. And when you're re-watching the footage back, it has very loud speakers. You can hear what's being said on the video easily. It's the loudest speakers I've heard on a little camera and it means that when you're out in the field in a noisy environment, say you're shooting in a busy street, you can still hear what you're saying when you're watching it back and checking the footage. And so if you want to go and see this camera in use, then go back and watch my vlogs, all right? You'll get entertained and you'll also see how this camera works. This camera is my vlogging setup. It's all I take to vlog now, which seems a bit crazy, but I don't use any extra microphones. I don't use any filters. Everything you see is from this camera when I'm out doing my wildlife photography vlogs. So if you do want to see it in action, if you want to envisage what the camera will be like for you, or you want to see how I use it, then go do that. And so we've talked in depth about this camera. I hope I've kept your attention. And if I haven't, you're not watching so you won't know. So thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed. I hope you've learned something. Check the links in the description to my Instagram, my shop, and my website, and click on the link if you want to buy one of these videos. I do get a tiny margin of the profits of that purchase, which helps us produce more content just like this and doesn't charge you anything. So I would love the support. Thank you very much, and I will see you in the next one.